So in this video, I wanted to spend some time talking about this pen. It's the Fisher Space Pen Capomatic. Of course, you probably know about the uh, AG7, which is the astronaut pen, sometimes known as the Zero Gravity Pen, or the CH4, which is the shuttle pen. Those are the very famous pens from Fisher Space Pen, and they're known for being sent up to space with the astronauts. Uh, there's a lot of famous stories about them, uh, but both, both of those pens have gotten to be quite expensive. And uh, so Fisher has something called the Capomatic. This has been around for a long time. This is what Fisher describes as their kind of everyday pen or their workhorse pen. Uh, on their website, they actually call it their blue collar pen. And uh, it's very similar with its internals to the AG7 and CH4, because it uses the same refill, but it's much more affordable. So for a pen like this, for you know, eight, 10, $12, whatever it is, a little bit more for some of these, which we'll talk about in a minute, you are getting a pen that's compatible with the standard Fisher pressurized refill. It's called a PR4. And this is their refill that will write in, you know, negative 30 degree weather, up to 200 and some odd degree writing, upside down writing, underwater, in the rain, what have you. That, that magic is in the refill. It's not part of the pen body necessarily. Of course, the AG7 and CH4 are beautiful pens, and the Capomatic is, uh, you know, it's not as fancy as those, but it definitely comes in some cool styles, which we'll get into in a second. This is uh, kind of the standard Capomatic. It is, they're all retractable. They do not use this side button that you would see on the standard Fisher pens like that AG7. It does not have a button. The top area pushes down. People see, they sometimes ask, well, does it pinch me? What happens? There, there's very little clearance between these two. So uh, it doesn't really catch on things or pinch you. Uh, you know, your finger can't be here, but if it is, it doesn't hurt or anything like that. So just get that out of the way. Uses a kind of a cheaper clip. Clip works great, but it's definitely not as fancy as the ones on the more expensive pens. Again, no button like the other ones. This is just a flat piece. The bottom on this one is plastic. In this case, it's uh, kind of like a dark blue, but it comes in a bunch of different colors. The top is metal on this one. It's almost always metal, uh, but sometimes instead of being chromed, it might be uh, uh, black. All black is very popular, and there's some other options again, which we'll get into in a second. There is a tip protector here, so that plastic is protected at the bottom, and this means the uh, this area won't split or anything like that as the pen gets some use. You could twist to open the pen. You could see pretty simple here. There's no metal reinforcement. It's just kind of standard plastic. Inside you have that PR4 and uh, it's a pen from 2016 or the refills from 2016 and these refills last for a very long time. So generally speaking the refill will match the pen. Uh, it's not always true. Obviously I could have swapped out this refill but Usually, the refill matched the pen. So 2016 is a pretty good guess for how long I've had this pen. Here's the action. It has a nice click, but it's not like the AG7 where it's a really high-end click. It does its job. It's a good writer and uh, a lot of fun. I think I've written with this refill probably dozens, if not hundreds of times on this channel. But you can see this is the Fisher Space Pen. And this is the Cap. Matic. There's not a lot written online about the history of the Capomatic, so I couldn't really come up with any good definitive dates for when it came out or uh, what happened, what years the models came out and stuff like that. The history of the AG7, the astronaut pen, is very well documented, probably more so than almost any pen aside from like maybe a Parker 51, but the Capomatic has very litten, little written down. Uh, I know it's been around since at least the 80s uh, because I have refills going back that far, but hard to say past that uh, might be the contents of another video in the future. Okay, so this is the standard Capomatic, and if you want to go to Fisher's website, you could kind of check out all the different serial numbers and things like that they have for the distinctions, but uh, I won't get into that here. So let's just say this is the standard one and the most affordable, and it is Chrome plus plastic. This is sort of the premium model. Here we have 
a uh, full metal Cap-O-Matic. You typically see this in uh, matte black with matte black. Also with black clip, it's kind of like a police edition or something like that. Uh, this is the natural brass version. You can see it's really nicely patinaed. Uh, I did a video on this one, I think over the summer, so maybe six, eight months ago. I had one of these. I had it for a long time. It was really beautifully patinaed, but I lost it. Uh, I'm still hoping to find it, but I bought a new one. That one had no patina, and now you can see, uh, you know, I'm not using this pen exclusively. It's one of the pens I use regularly, uh, but held up nicely. This area here where there's some friction, very little in the way of wear. It holds up well. The pen looks great. It looks like it's been, you know, used for a long time. That This natural brass, uh, I think, really looks great over time. There's a varnished brass version, which will stay that really bright gold. So the main difference is this one, it's a fair bit more expensive. Instead of being like, you know, 12 bucks or something, is like $25, $26, maybe a little bit more if you're going through an official uh, retailer. Inside, this whole bottom obviously is metal, and you can see there's the metal threading here. And uh, this one has, yeah, so a 2021 refill, and I bought it uh, not too long ago. So sometimes the refills are, you know, in, the pen could be in stock in a retailer for a long time before you buy it. So I bought this one in 2022. It had a 2021 refill in it. Kind of makes sense. That's why that dating method, not perfectly accurate. This pen's a little heavier, obviously a lot more expensive, uh, but it holds up really well. It uses the same tip protector here. You don't want that fancy brass rubbing or being dropped on the ground. So you get a little piece of steel or whatever that is, whatever that is over here. Same refill. Great pen, uh, much, much better looking and a lot of fun to use. Here's the newest model of the Capomatic, And this one is called the Cerakote. That's C-E-R-A-K-O-T-E. -E. And that is like a ceramic material that's used to coat the outside. Uh, apparently this is a fairly popular material for uh, different types of equipment. It wasn't something I was familiar with, but it, uh, could adhere to the metal of the body and it has a nice grip to it. It's a really nice satin finish. It feels sort of like a ceramic, which is not surprising. And uh, it would even work on the clip. You can see here, here the, clearly the, the clip is not, is not brassed. It's just that stainless steel clip. Here, the Cerakote, I guess it doesn't mind a little bit of flex and it could be uh, you know, dipped or whatever it is so that this stainless steel clip has that material. You see it's a little bit off, which is incredibly annoying, but uh, these pens are not, you know, designed to be masterpieces. They are working pens, so sometimes you see little issues like that. Anyway, you see a full, in the same way that this pen is often sold in black on black on black, so full black, version, like the tactical version or whatever. This one is also in that full finish. You see the matching color. So it's a, uh, <laughs> it's, it's just like a, a matching uh, mono color scheme, which I really like. This color is called Dark Cherry. And uh, it re released, I want to say in late, mid to late 2022. It's also sold in a dark gray, like a charcoal or titanium type color. And then I believe a matte, uh, matte black so if you want that Cerakote finish then you could buy it these ones last i checked were only sold direct from fisher so you had to pay for a premium on them you're looking like 35 bucks or something like that uh, it's nice to support fisher but uh you're definitely taking a big hit on getting this new finish i'm sure that price will go down over time you can see this is full metal so you have the metal threading here same refill 1022 so i bought this one not that long ago, obviously. And uh, I like this one. You get a nice weight to it, which it's all metal. You get better grip than you'd expect, which you have that ceramic finish. It's not as rough as like a, a true ceramic, like a, like a flower pot or something, but you do get some extra grip. And the material is held up really well. Uh, I expected to see some, uh, you know, breakdown over here but it really hasn't uh, starting to break down at all yet. So I'm pretty happy with that one. Uh, I'm not sure I would recommend this, but the Cerakote finish 
It looks great, but it's, uh, you know, all matching color. Even the tip protector is matching. And then you also get some extra grip. And the colors are great. This dark cherry is not a color that is possible in a uh, glossy plastic. You just can't pull it off. Same with the dark gray, which is, looks quite cool as well. Everything else is basically the same as the other Capomatics, the way it works. But you get the new color and the fancy material. Lastly, I have this one. This is a vintage Capomatic. I'm not really sure how old it is. Uh, but I was I stumbled this one on this on eBay. Uh, I don't know how long ago, probably a while back, and uh, wasn't that afford, wasn't that cheap. I think it was maybe uh, maybe twenty twenty five bucks. So it was definitely at a premium. Not crazy, given that it has this really nice finish. This is the finish you would find on the uh, CH four uses this one. Uh, Fisher usually calls it their grid finish. Uh, has a few different names but it's their uh, grid finish or their Cizale, whatever Parker likes to call it. And this is a full metal chrome pen. It has this grid, which is a spiral with some, uh, you know, vertical lines in it. You see a much fancier clip. Let's look at a modern clip. No writing on it. No writing and at a wrong angle. And this one says space on it. And there's a little planet or you know with a ring on it here we see usa cap dash o dash matic quite cool perfectly vertical which is nice there's no writing here which is why i think you have the writing here you know this pattern goes down whereas on this pen you don't really need to write on the clip because it says fisher space pen usa or just uh space pen by fisher rather this pen also, you see it there, Space Pen by Fisher, so no need to have it on the clip. This one has a slightly different shape, and I think that I would attribute it to just being an older pen. You can see the bottom. It tapers from higher up, no tip protector. And then at the top, this one is flat. In fact, all three of the newer ones are flat. This has a slight asymmetrical and that asymmetrical angle to it, you know, from the sign, it's asymmetrical. Here, it's symmetrical, obviously. Uh, so that's quite cool. And then, uh, you know, obviously that grid pattern does not go all the way to the top. The most interesting thing is that this one has a slightly different clip, click to it, and clearly it has a different refill. Look how narrow that is. So if you open this up, first of all, you'll see from its age, look at it, turn. It's been clearly bent, so... That's too bad. Uh, and then in the inside, it has an old school refill in it. I had to replace the refill with this Schneider Express 75, uh, which is the only refill I had, which had a very narrow tip and a spring stop right here. This this like monster old school spring was in there. It's really it's a really beautifully made spring. It's like twice as big as a modern spring. And you could see perfect fit for this refill. And this is a modern refill. Uh, this one's probably just, you know, a year, couple of years old, maybe two, three years old, but it fits these old school pen designs. And you can see here, all metal. I don't know what it is. It, it almost looks like aluminum from how light and gray it is, but maybe it's aluminum pressed into steel. Who, who knows? Maybe it's zinc. I don't really, hard to say, but you need this refill to get into this narrow tip here this came with a different refill but it was uh it, it did it was long and skinny like this it was definitely not a I'm trying to get this refill out uh a fisher pr4 style refill so i guess at one point the capomatic or some subset of capomatics did not use a pressurized refill so this was more of an i guess an executive style pen and less of a workhorse pen, which it would have sacrificed the, uh, you know, upside and writing, the underwater writing, that sort of thing. You know, the heat extremes. The pen's a great writer now because it has a great refill in it. But the refill that came with this, the original, it had no date on it. It had no markings on it of any kind. It didn't say Fisher on it or PR4 or anything like that. And there was no date on it either. So, and, and obviously it didn't work at all. So 
I can't really speak to when this pen came out or how well it wrote, but it's a pretty interesting addition. Clearly it's been bent before I got it, which is a bummer. It's off by, you know, a couple degrees of crookedness, but I'm hesitant to play with it too much. So I don't want to damage it further. And if it's just like epoxy in here or bent aluminum, you don't want to mess with it. I guess the takeaway from this would be back in the day, at some point, hard to say when, the Capomatic had some variations that are considerably different than what we consider to be the rules of the Capomatic today, which would be, you know, flat button, uh, PR4 refill would be primary importance to it, tip protector, things like that. Clearly, there are some differences back then. Uh, yeah, so I think that's pretty much everything you would want to know, at least everything I know about the Capomatic. Again, I'm very short on historical details here just because I couldn't find that much or what I found. It was either contradictory or uh, it didn't seem super well documented, which is unusual for Fisher, but uh, I'll try to work on that in the future. More importantly, I think if you're interested in Fisher pay space pens or pens that work anywhere, and you want to see some of the variations, here they are. You have your vintage one, which is quite hard to find, but they're definitely out there. Then you have your new ones, like your Cerakote. Also, there's a full metal, a full black version of this, which is non-Cerakote and more popular and much easier to find. So again, your, your uh, full color matching ones in this sort of uh, just like matte appearance, so more tactical. You have your full metal versions, either all silver or all black, or uh, yeah, this is obviously the uh, natural brass or the varnish brass, so a lot of options there. But this is sort of, I would say, like the premium version. And then you have your standard workhorse Fisher Space Pen, which is still a great pen. I'm not trying to downplay it at all. It's actually probably the one I use the most, the one I tend to leave in the car because it's you don't have to feel too bad. Like when I lost, <laughs> lost my brass, Capomatic was like kind of heartbreaking. Uh, I would hate to lose one of these, but it definitely doesn't hurt as bad. And then it, you know, could deal with any sort of temperature conditions or if your notebook or whatever you're writing on is a little wet or you only have a scrap of glossy magazine, no problem writing on it. And that's kind of the strengths of the Fisher Space Pens. But getting one in for, you know, eight, 10, $12, whatever this costs now is a really great pen. And I like the, I like that click. So yeah, that is the uh, Capomatic. Thanks for watching.